Right, this is our last question for this paper. It's 5.2 and it is a bit of a finance exchange rate question. So let's just read it. It says, Ryan is a South African citizen who owns a company in South Africa and wants to buy shares in a company in Canada. Shares are basically a part of, right? That's what a share means, right? And then table six says, well, table six shows the exchange rate for five countries on 17th March, 2022. So here's the table. Again, if you don't and like intuitively understand the information given, go to the questions and those should help you, right? But let's look at this information. So saying, here's various currencies, here's the units per czar. So it's basically saying, and a czar is a, um, a South African rand. So it's saying one South African rand will give me that much euro. So it's not gonna give me much across all of them. And then over here it's saying, well, how many rand will one euro give me, right? So it's stating the exchange rate in two different ways, which is quite important depending on whether you're buying rand or whether you're buying euro, right? or any of the other currencies here. So it says here, use table six to answer the questions that follow. Identify the currency which is weakest against the rand, right? So it's basically saying, which of these, right, um, do I get the most bang for my buck from a rand perspective, right? So what that means is, like, let's look at all of these, right? You'll see that that's the highest one. So the Japanese yen is actually the weakest currency against the rand. Now you could be saying, I don't understand what that means. I would have gone for the smallest, right? But remember, the smallest number here, which you can see across all of these, is the British pound. It actually means that for each rand, I get less pounds, right? So it's actually a really strong currency because I get less for my rand. When I have a weak currency against the South African rand, it means I get quite a lot of that currency, right, Com comparatively or relatively compared to other currencies. So our, our answer here is the Japanese yen, okay? Now, Exchange rates are something that a lot of students struggle with, um, and it's not too difficult. You just have to wrap your head around sort of the dynamic, right? And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll you'll have sort of got that dynamic stuck in your brain. Then it says, show how the Russian ruble of 0, 0,143373 czar per unit was determined. So it's basically saying, if we have this, how do I determine this, right? So we know that one rand equals this. How do we then know how many Russian ruble equal one rand. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, no problem. We're going to say, well, we know that one rand equals or is a ratio, right? 6.97481, right? And that's the Russian ruble, okay? So we know that that, that rand value is going to give me that, okay? Now, but we want to say, well, we want to actually know how many rand I get from one ruble. So how do we get to one when we have this on this side? Well, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll remember this dynamic, right? Where you can use your ratio, but what you do to the one side, you have to do to the other side. Students sometimes forget that and they'd be doing some strange things, right? But the logic makes sense. If I want to maintain the relationship that's been shown, then what I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side so that the two sides actually remain as the relationship was stated, okay? So I've done that there, that's easy enough. Now I have to do on the other side, I have to say one divided by 6.97481 and then we get 0 0.1433, all of those, right? And you'll see the answer that we got there is actually what they've got here. So we've done what we need to do, we've shown them what we need to do, right? And therefore we've got all our marks and that's how we got that exchange rate, okay? And that's how exchange rates are used in reality. It's not like we're teaching you some strange thing. It's exactly how it works out in reality. But let's move on and see what else is going to be asked. So it says, Ryan decides to invest 1.23 million. Now you could be saying, oh, Marks, that's not how you, that's not how it was stated. But I always think it's good to see numbers in different formats. So that's why I stated it like that, right? In shares in a Canadian company, convert the Rand value into Canadian dollar. So we're going to be looking over here right? And be careful that you're reading the right line. So sometimes what students do is they read here, then they read down or they read up. You need to highlight that line so that you know which one you're working with. So here we want to convert rands into Canadian dollar. Well, we know that one rand, right, from what I said before, one rand gives me, let's just see, 0, 0, 0, 0,0084845. Okay, that's what it gives me. But now I have a lot more rands, right? I have 1.23 million. So we're going to now make this one, two, three, zero, one, zero. I mean, sorry, another three zeros. What have I done to that one round to get you? Well, I've times it by this amount, have I not? Right? And again, similar to the previous question, what I've done to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So I must times this side by 
Did I do that right? Yes, I did. Okay. So now we're going to go and we're going to plug that into our calculator and we're going to get a wonderful answer, right? So we say zero points. Again, be careful that you, you see, I'm really, I'm saying careful and then I'm doing the mistake myself, right? Be careful to type it in correctly, right? Um, and then we are done. So how many Canadian dollars is it? Well, based on our calculation here, it is uh 104359.35 right and you can just say canadian dollar i'm not sure um exactly how you write it but that is the dollar sign so i said canadian dollar um i rounded it off to two decimal places here it was already two decimal places so it makes sense to keep it as two decimal places but remember with currencies you always keep two decimal places right because that's how currencies are stated and that is then our final answer okay let's look at the next question 5.2.4. This is one of those like general knowledge questions. Well, not general knowledge, common sense questions. So it says, give one reason why you would motivate Ryan to invest in a Canadian company. Now, you can say a variety of things, yeah? But what I would say is I'd say, well, he can diversify his income. You could be saying, I don't even know what that means, Margie. Diversify just means you want to have assets in different um, types of companies, different types of um, maybe different countries like we have here, right? Like it says South Africa and Canada, that's diversifying because now you have assets and shareholdings in different countries. And that's actually really handy because if something goes wrong in South Africa, it's unlikely to affect your assets in Canada, which means that you'll then have some form of value, but in another country, which is good, right? You, it's basically a way of hedging your risk. Hedging meaning reducing and making your, your, um, your ability to weather bad events better. So that's what I would say. 5.2.4, I would say diversify his income, right? Um, his income or um, diversify his income or portfolio. Now, portfolio just means a group of assets, right? Or the assets that you are managing. You could also say things like the Canadian currency is stronger, so you might want some exposure there, um, and he might get a better return in Canada. We know sometimes returns in South Africa can be volatile because of the sort of climate that we live in, right? But anything that makes sort of sense, for those of you who do economics or business, you should be able to think of some points there. 5.2.5. After two years and eight months, Ryan sold his shares and received a final amount of 1529.360. In South Africa, Ryan would have received an interest rate of 8.1%, compounded annually for two years and eight months. Ryan stated that he earned more than 14,000 return on his foreign investment compared to the potential South African investment. Verify showing all calculations where the Ryan statement is valid. Right? So basically, over here, we're saying, well, this is what he earned. Okay, this is what he earned from Canada. Right, so that's his, that's what he would got from Canada. And we have to work out, well, what would he have got from South Africa? And is it 14,000 Rand less than what he got from Canada? That's basically what the question is saying. So how much did he invest? Well, we know that he invested this much. Now we have to increase that for the interest that he would have earned in South Africa had he invested the money in South Africa. So he could have got 8,1% per year for two years and eight months. Now, um. It did say compounded, right? So now for some of you, you know the compound um, interest formula. Because it's not given here, I'm not going to use it just because some students are going to be like, oh, I didn't know we had to learn that, etc. There's other ways you can do this. So I would just say at the end of the first year, he had this amount, right? And then we have to times by the interest, right? So times by the interest of 8.1%, okay? So say 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0 is times 8.1%. And that is how much interest, right, he would have got at the end of the first year. Now, remember, that's not all he's going to have. He's obviously at the, at the beginning of the second year, he's going to have this amount that he put in at the beginning of the first year. And he's going to have all this interest that he's, that he's accumulated now over the first year, right? And then he's going to earn interest on that because that's what compound interest is, right? You earn interest on interest. So I'm going to earn interest on this interest amount. Okay, simple interest, you're only earning interest on the initial amount that you put in. So we'd keep you earning interest on this one, two, three, zero, four, four zeros, right? But with compound interest, there's that element of interest being added, and then you're also earning interest on that interest. So important to understand that dynamic. Okay, so let's now put this into our calculator. One, two, three, zero, one, two, three, plus nine, nine, six, three, zero. And you're going to times it by eight comma one percent. 
And that's how much he would have earned in the second year. Okay. But remember, it doesn't just say two years. It says two years and eight months. Now, what I'm going to show you now is according to the memo. But I want you to know that in reality, this is not how it's calculated. Okay. So what they've done in the memo is they say, well, if he earns 8,1% in a year, let's just say 8 over 12 times 8,1%. Because in that third year, he doesn't earn for all the 12 months. He only earns for 8 of the 12 months. And that's why I said 8 over 12. In reality, you actually have to convert the interest rate so that it is a compounded monthly rate. And then you would um, account for the months. In MathLit, they simplify this mechanism. But I do think it's important to highlight that this is not how it plays out in reality. It's not majorly different, but yet I think it's, it's important to, to highlight the inaccuracy. Okay. So what they would have done is they would say, well, for the third year, I'm going to say... One, two, three, zero, 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 plus the amount I earned in the first year, plus the amount I earned in the second year, right? And I'm going to times that by 8,1%, but it's not 8.1%, it's not the whole year. I'm then going to times it by 8 over 12, right? And the reason, oh, that's a terrible time zone. And the reason it's 8 over 12 is because it is 8 months, right? And the 12 comes from there being 12 months. Right, so it's only saying we only want interest for eight of the twelve months, not all twelve months, because that's not a true reflection of what's happening. Okay, so let's go back and type this all in. I realize that this is a lot of typing, and there are obviously quicker ways of doing it, but I think in in understanding the mechanism, um, there's a lot of value there. Okay, so then we have eight over twelve. Okay, and that is our answer for the interest in the last year. Okay, I didn't round it off right now because I'm only going to round off at the very end. So now I'm going to take this answer and I'm going to add all of my amounts back together. So I'm going to add the one zero, I just want to make sure you can see, the one zero seven zero seven zero zero point zero three. I'm going to add the nine nine six three zero and I'm going to add, so that's the interest of all the years, right? That's the first year, that's the second year and then there was the eight months that we've done already. And we're going to add this in here. And our total amount that he would have got, right, is one five. Let me just see if I got this right. One five one. Okay, I just want to check if I'm doing this correctly. Yes, I am. Fabulous. So the final answer is what I got here. I never want to be teaching you incorrect things, so I do check as I go along. Okay. Now that is the amount. And I'm going to write that there. And that is the random amount that he would have got from South Africa. Okay, so it's fabulous. Remember to always round off to two decimal places. Now we're not done. We have to compare this to this and see what the difference is. So we can say 1529360 minus 1514945.85. Okay, we'll put that in our calculator. 1529360 minus answer. Okay. And the answer there is 14,414.15. Why did I say 1,5? Remember currency, you round off to two decimal places. So we look at the third decimal place, it's above five, we round it up, and that's our answer there, right? Let's go back though and see whether we've answered the question. It said, he stated that he earned more than 14,000 Rand return on his foreign investment compared to a potential South African investment, right? Verify showing all calculations where the statement's right. So we've worked out that he actually earned over 14,000 Rand more from investing in Canada than investing in South Africa, right? Because this is his essay amount, right? So therefore, and you have to put this, guys. Some of you forget to do this and then you lose the mark. Therefore, Ryan, right, is right. And you get a mark for just saying that, right? So even if you don't get to the calculations, just say right or wrong. And you have like a 50% chance of getting it right. So that is this question paper done. I hope you found that helpful. Um, and we'll move on to other question papers now. Cheers, guys.